Okay, thanks. Um, how many people here are using point clouds and not using Poodle? How many? Okay. How many people here are using Poodle and point clouds? Oh, that's pretty good. And how many people just want to start getting into point clouds and aren't using Poodle yet? Oh, that's okay. Some new, new folks. So this will this will give us a good status on the uh, Poodle project. Um, it's been a few years since we've done one of these, so I'll go through a, a few of the releases we've had um, since the last time we got together. So last time we did this, we were at version 1.9. We've gone through a number of releases up to now. Uh, current release is uh, 2.4.3. You can see we've kind of gone kind of a two release per year um, cycle. Not absolutely. We had a long break there uh, during the pandemic where we only had one release. But we're kind of back in that uh, two release uh, a year cycle. Um, the, the library is BSD licensed, so it does support proprietary public plugins. So if you have your own proprietary format or other things like that that you want to include, that's perfectly fine. It won't be distributed with the library, but you can um, and use the plugin at runtime. So a couple of major library changes over the past few years. Um, the cloud, ref, uh, cloud access library, Arbiter, is now built in. So access to Google Cloud, Azure, um, AWS is all built in. Uh, Python API, that's a new big change, now is a full object-oriented Python API as opposed to the much more limited Python API we had in, in previous releases. Um, we've added where predicates to all the filters, so that's kind of a global change to all filters. Poodle is now built on at least uh, version 3 of GDAL, so that's required now, so um, much more of the time-dependent uh, projection support is in there through Proj and uh, version 3 of GDAL. LASPERF compression library is now built in. Um, it used to be uh, an optional library compile that you had, now it's required. Um, and one thing about the LASPERF library, it's now been relicensed to Apache Public License. It used to be LGPL, so that hopefully we'll get a little bit more um, embedding in uh, proprietary applications that will support uh, uh, LASPERF compression. Uh, one of the big things, and I hope all of you were at uh, Howard's talk about uh, Copic. Uh, Copic support is now built into Poodle. Um, so I'll go over a few advantages of Copic, but if you really want to know more about Copic or COPC or COPC, however we pronounce it, um, look up Howard's talk online. Uh, that will give you a really good foundation on Copic and why you want to use it. Uh, we've got a few bug fixes for uh, now that we've got Copic support in. And so if you are using Copic, you want to make sure you're using the latest release 2.4.3 because there were some important bugs that were fixed. Uh, late breaking change that was added into Arbiter now is multi-profile support. So you can hit use two different sets of credentials or multiple sets of credentials to hit different um, cloud data sources for both reading or reading and writing. So that's a very useful capability. And there have been a lot of new filters, a few new readers and writers that I'm not going to go in through all the list, but uh, check out the website at poodle.io and you'll see a large number of filters available. So some of the things coming in the next release, uh, 2.5, uh, enhanced TerraSolid, both read, which we've had, uh, but now write support. Not full spatial support, but much better write support than we've had in the past, or didn't have in the past. Um, Proj JSON support will, will be added. So JSON, seeing your projection information instead of well-known uh, well text 2, you can now see it in Proj JSON. Um, it's much easier to parse and be easy, easier to pick out portions of the projection out of the Proj JSON output. We'll be adding trajectory estimation uh, as a plug-in, um, PTX read support, some workflow improvements uh, to tile indexes. And if you want to know more about that, hit up Howard because he's still working out exactly what he wants to do with the workflow improvements. Uh, we'll be adding a stack at reader um, to Poodle so you'll be able to read stack collections of uh, point cloud data. And the time frame of this is looking to be December. So Poodle is a kernel application. There's one main uh, application binary, that's the Poodle binary, and a number of other um, applications that are just um, add-ons to the, the Poodle main kernel. So 
it's very similar to Git. Git, push, poodle, info. They're, they're all on the main commands and they're just, they're really all specialized pipeline operations um, in the guise of making some kind of nice helper, helper applications. So the, the main um, thing you'll use to get information about your point clouds is Poodle Info. Um, there's a, numerous options to, to do this, and all of these are available as filters as well. So there's a stats filter that will give you stats information, different ranges, things like that. Metadata to read your basic metadata, projection information, header values, stuff like that. There's the hex bin filter, of which you can get through the boundary um, option that will give you a very nice form-fitting boundary uh, for your point cloud data. Limits to dimensions, schema output, um, individual point fetches that you can do through info, and you know, just general summary information that you want to use without hitting the point data. So that's useful for a number of um, large data sets like EPT. So here's just an example data, uh, data set from um, Estonia that I was able to get online. And they have some very nice data sets there, uh, all, all public, all with multiple dimensions, uh, color dimensions, IR, fully classified. It's a very nice uh, collection of data. And this is output in uh, QGIS now. So QGIS has Poodle built in and can read uh, LAS point cloud data or Copic data and will generate 3D views of, you, of uh, your point cloud data in, right in QGIS. So here's an example of uh, running Poodle info on that file. You can see it was um, a very big file for the um, number of points. It's 467 megs, um, 468 million points, so a pretty good size file. And it took almost 10 minutes to read the entire file because I was getting stats over the entire file. You can see that the point count is pretty large. Average Z elevation in this case is 33 meters. But since this is a Copic file here, Copic, so we can uh, change to and set a particular resolution. So one of the options on the reader for Copic is to set a, a resolution. So now you can see less than a minute and a half, I was able to read the entire file just at a, a different resolution. You can see that the point count dropped, but my overall average is right in the same range and same, similar to my um, looking at the dimensions, you can see it read all the dimensions that were, are the classification values that were available there. So that's one of the big advantages of Copic data, is you can now do summary reads of your, infra, of your data without having to read the entire file, and you can read it to a certain depth or certain resolution. Here's an example of reading, uh, generating a boundary for a Copic file, and you can see that there's two different uh, resolutions here, two meters and 50 meters. So this is the 50 meter boundary, it's pretty coarse, but at two meters, you can generate a much tighter boundary to get a better idea of your data. And this is just one of those things that you can do with Copic, is you can filter out and set the resolution of the information that you want to get um, your analysis for. Poodle Translate is kind of your basic translation capabilities, although in the end, you can pass filters to Poodle Translate, so it's kind of a command line version of the pipelines. Um, and you can actually generate a pipeline from a translate command line, or you can read filters from a JSON file. So it's basically just a, a Poodle translate is, you know, input file, output file. Um, here's reading, you know, directly from uh, uh, an online location that I found. Set the boundary to a certain extent and write it out to a new data set. And then you can even do, you know, add filters and reprojection on the fly. And this is an example of including one of the filters in the command line. But pipelines are kind of the full power of Poodle. It allows you to stack a series of operations together uh, programmatically to build a actual workflow. And this is all done using a JSON pipeline. So this is an example of a pipeline that has a reader here. This is, again, using. Um, at reading right about of S3 using the Arbiter library, a reprojection filter, and then an output. And this is an example of that multi-profile -prof support that was just added. So I'm using a different profile to write this data set than I am to read this data set. So just allowing you to um, set your credentials right at the individual file level that you're accessing. And pipelines also allow you to um, use command line overrides on various portions of the attributes. 
So this makes for very easy batch processing. So in this case, I have this partial pipeline here that's just reading a DEM, uh, filtering the data on, on the DEM, and I'm specifying the LAS file name in and out at the command line. Well, since I'm specifying that at the command line, I can also do that through a batch process. Find all the LAS files, run in parallel, and just specify the, the input values from the find into the reader, and then set the, the copic writer output, process all these files in one command line operation. Pipelines can be very complex. You can do quite a bit with different types of organizations of pipelines. So they can be branched, they can have tags on them to indicate this operation should be leading into this other operation. Uh, so I'll have a complex example here. Please don't try to read all of this. This is a really complex example, but you can kind of see how, it, how much you can put into this. And this is, um, unfortunately, this one, um, you don't have access to this data, but all these kind of other things are, are stuff you could definitely run. So this is just, it's got a reprojection filter. It's got a, a built uh, filter here to do uh, bare, bare earth calculation. Then it's splitting it in multiple tiles, writing out those tiles to uh, a tile set. Then it's merging those tiles back together after splitting, and then it's um, running it through GDAL to generate a, uh, a digital surface uh, DTM of the entire uh, collection. So some of the major filters you'll probably end up using is the reprojection filter is a very commonly used one. It interfaces with proj, so you can do all the um, different types of projections you want to do through proj, including vertical datum reprojection. Um, for example, here you can see that the, this one is a UTM zone 41 with a, is this, is that, let's see, that's NAD, uh, NADVD88, isn't it? And then conversion to um, WGS84 in this operation. No, that's uh, EGM96, sorry, EGM96. So this is just an example of how you can, um, do pretty much any kind of reprojection you want to do using proj. But there are um, additional filters in here for proj pipeline. So you can include, incorporate full proj pipelines into your reprojection if you have very specific needs on shifts you want to do that aren't you know simple to do with EPSG codes. You can use well-known text to proj JSON. Basically, whatever you can pass through to proj will be uh, work as an input into uh, Poodle. Poodle has a GDAL writer, so for converting um, point clouds into surfaces, there's a number of different um, uh, functions, min, max, count, IDW is probably one of the more common ones. Uh, it supports a full array of GDAL creation options, and this is one of those um, writers that works in stream mode. And remember this towards the end, because I'll uh, come back and explain exactly what I mean about stream mode versus standard mode but it's an important thing for uh, the amount of memory that you're gonna be using for your operations. So here's just an example of running a pipeline from a data source online and converting it to a half meter uh, DTM, filtering on the classification, looking for bare earth uh, information. Colorization is another kind of filter you can do, so you can take a any kind of um, Google image and map it onto the same projection of the point cloud and apply color points, color values to the individual points in your point cloud. So this is just using um, a WMS, the GDAL for um, Google map tiles, generating a VRT, generating a subset based on the data, and then applying the filter colorization using Poodle. And, and scaling the color values because LAS expects 16-bit color, not 8-bit color in the Google color, um, Google satellite images, 8-bit color. So you do that and you take a classified point cloud here that didn't have color information and apply the, uh, the image that fetched from Google tiles and now you have a nice colorized point cloud here ready to, to go. There's also uh, ground capabilities for um, generating bare earth images. Okay. You can use filter range or assign to clear existing classes and the Smurf filter uh, is essentially the same as the Poodle ground command line application. 
So here's an example of you know the data set before the ground filter has been run, and uh, bare earth after it's been uh, cleared out of uh, above ground values. T index is a um, command line that allows you to build tile indexes of multiple point clouds to allow you to operate them on them as a as a large collection. So you can run a T uh, T index to generate you know a, a Geo package of 100 tiles or something like that, and then operate on the uh, the, the GDAL tile index as a, as a collection rather than doing it on individual point clouds. And this is one of those things that we'll be working on a bit more for 2.5. And you can also go the other way. You can take a, a point cloud and separate it into multiple tiles. So, you know, I want my tiles to be one square kilometer or something like that from a bunch of flight lines that I merge together. One of the new things in Poodle now um, is the really well done Python API. It's very Pythonic now. Uh, there's a main Poodle object. Oh, let me go back one. Here that you can uh, apply uh, stages on top of the Poodle object and then options to the stages. So you have a reader stage on top of the Poodle object and a LAS on top of the reader object. And then the multiple inputs to that are just quarks. And then you compose a pipeline together by piping them together um, in a variety of different ways and then execute the pipeline. And the way to put the pipeline together can be pretty complex. You can just import from a JSON string. You can generate a, a series of stages of different Poodle objects. Um, you can join them together with the pipeline operator. You can even replace them in place once you have um, a pipeline and replace stages and stuff like that. So this is. This is a big improvement over our Python API in the, in the past. So when I remember, when I talked about um, streaming mode, this is something I wanted to clarify because this is something that comes up often. Poodle does not support parallelization inside the library. Its parallelization happens at the process level. Um, so there's probably never going to be support for parallelization inside the API if Howard has his way. <laughs> but there are a number of formats now that support bounded queries. So you can kind of, uh, for a particular file, make multiple bounded queries um, from EPT or Copic. So you can kind of uh, force parallelization on a single file if you need to just by running multiple bounded queries against the same data set. And then you can use a variety of different buffers to eliminate edge effects and join those back together and generate it in parallel. But in standard mode, some, some filters are required to operate in standard mode because they need access to all the data. For example, the Copic writer only runs in standard mode because it needs to read all the data before it can sort it and organize the octree uh, and write it out in an ordered fashion. But a lot of the um, filters and writers can operate in stream mode and can operate in chunks at a time, so are very efficient uh, for memory. We have new documentation now that's done using Read the Docs, um, provides a full PDF or EPUB download, and now the docs are versioned. So this is a nice thing as we get more and more capabilities over time. Uh, we have a full workshop that's available using QGIS and Conda and a large, several uh, tutorials available. Releases uh, will be at poodle.io. Uh, we have a dev repo on GitHub. Most binaries will be distributed through Conda. That's our primary way for distributing uh, binaries. Uh, binaries are still available through Docker, but no longer enable in Deb available in Debian. So we are without a maintainer for Debian. So if somebody wants to step forward and maintain Poodle and Debian, let us know. But as for right now, we're uh, not going to be in Debian. And that's about it. <laughs>